Hey everyone, welcome to a long awaited and highly requested video where I'm finally going to be ranking the Soulsborne bosses in terms of difficulty. One of the most common questions I get both on streams and in the comment sections of my video is, hey, what do you think of this boss? How hard do you think this boss is? How hard is this boss? How hard is that boss? This is the hardest, that is the hardest. You know, it's all about boss difficulty. That's all that this is about. That's all that the entire series is about, really, when you think about it. So I thought that I would finally sit down, take the time, really take the time, because this is going to be fucking long, and rank the Soulsborne bosses in terms of difficulty. A couple of things to go over before we get started here. Number one, I am excluding Sekiro. Uh, the reason I'm excluding Sekiro is that, first of all, I haven't played Sekiro as much as the other Souls games. The second big thing is that I feel like Sekiro is so different compared to the other Souls games that it's it's not even possible or worth it to compare. Demon Souls, The Three Dark Souls and Bloodborne, you can get away with comparing even though each game is slightly different, you can kind of rank the bosses. Uh, Sekiro, yeah, you need a separate tier list for that. Uh, definitely, definitely need one. Second thing to go over, this is just my opinion obviously. Um, there are going to be some con controversial picks. Third thing is everybody has pretty much died to every single boss in the Souls series. You're lying if you're saying um, you haven't. So, you know, when I do the ranking and I'll explain what each tier means, you know, take them a little bit lightly. And fourth thing, final thing to go over, I'm ranking these bosses based on how experienced I am with Souls games. You have to understand, you know, I'm not a noob, or at least I don't think I am a noob. Neither am I a fucking, like, uh, play through the game in an hour and a half without getting hit type person. So, you know, I think I'm decently skilled at these games. Uh, and that's kind of the, I don't know, the ranking I'm going to be basing this off of. Final thing, then we're really going to get started. Uh, this is the best tier maker I could find for the Souls bosses. Some of these icons are tiny and difficult to make out. The other ones uh, that use like pictures of the bosses are even worse. Oh yeah, of course that happens. That's Family Frost, if you don't know. People living in Central Europe know what's up. But I swear, using these pictures, you can't even tell like 80% of what the Bloodborne bosses are. So I might have to like lean in or something and check what some of these are because they are difficult to tell apart. But let's explain the tiers. An S tier boss is very difficult. An S tier boss means you will probably die. If you're playing, concentrating, you have a strong build, you are still likely to die if you make a couple of mistakes. So here S tier, chance of death, very high, you need to concentrate. An A tier boss is very difficult. You need to focus, you can't be reading the chat or you can't be like, I don't know, have your mind wandering off. You need to concentrate on these bosses and get them killed. They are still fair though, they are tough but fair. B tier bosses need very minimal effort. You kind of still need to pay attention, but you can glance at chat, you can read a couple of comments or whatever, but you, you know, you can't just like, uh, I don't know, blaze through these bosses or something. You can't just like, you know, switch off your mind. C tier bosses, you can't switch off your mind. C tier bosses are like where I go in and I'm like 99.5% confident that I'm going to be winning. Sometimes I'm not, not even trying, I'm just like bullshitting around, laughing with chat or like reading stuff or like my mind is wandering off. That's a C tier boss. A D tier boss is if you die, uninstall the game. Or if you die, at least quit playing for that session because you are not going to be getting far. Um, D tier bosses are very easy. And finally, the coveted purple trash boss tier. The trash boss tier are for all the bosses that are trash and fall outside of normal categorization possibilities. I think you can probably already tell what some of these bosses are going to be like. Um, Bed of Chaos, yeah. Bed of Chaos, if I, if I rank Bed of Chaos, it'll go into S. But it's a trash boss, it's 
not a normal souls boss so it's going in here that's kind of the tears finally let's get started here let's jump in starting with i think this is organized bloodborne demons and the three dark souls the one reborn one reborn i'd put at minimal effort uh, he has some acid attacks you need to pay attention because he has that big acid puddle which is annoying and the hitbox is kind of wonky on it he has that thing where it falls from the sky but otherwise he goes down quickly if you hit his weak spots you know not much to it Next up is the Celestial Emissary. The Celestial Emissary I'm going to put into the if you die uninstall category. You really shouldn't be dying to Celestial, especially at the point where you take them on in the game. Uh, you're likely to have high-end weapons and armor, so no reason really to die to this boss, honestly. Next up, oh yeah, and as you can see, I'm going to be going through it at, at this pace because we have a lot of bosses to cover. A lot of bosses, so expect some of these to be fairly quick. Ebrietas, Daughter of the Cosmos. Ebrietas, I think, goes into the Needs Concentration category. Ebrietas has high health, damaging attacks, and a wide variety of attacks. Uh, obviously, she's an optional boss. Uh, fairly difficult, yeah, you need to put your mind to Ebrietas when you're fighting. Uh, you can't just, like, you know, ignore what she's doing. You need to have your dodging and attacking and everything on point. Particularly the frenzy attacks are the issue. Amygdala. Amygdala, amygdala, amygdala. I am going to put into the minimal effort needed category. The thing about amygdala is that... The only reason it's go not going into not even paying attention is because it has weak spots, so you can't just like wail on it anywhere. And in the second phase when it rips its arms off and does that slam with the arms, that attack is very damaging. It has a high chance of one-shotting you uh, if your HP is not high. So just because of that, Amygdala goes into the minimal effort category. Oh, and by the way, last thing to mention, the tiers are not ordered, so just because I put like mix up these bosses doesn't mean that one is harder or easier than the other i can't put that much effort into this list especially considering how much we have to cover mikolash mikolash goes into the if you die uninstall category really he only has one deadly attack and that is the uh the big like magic explosion what is it called a call beyond or something like that i think that's the name that's the only dangerous stack he has. It does a lot of damage, kind of difficult to dodge, but otherwise low HP, parryable. Um, it's just you shouldn't really die to Mikolash. This is a puzzle boss, essentially, but because it has a little bit of combat, it's saved from going into the trash boss category. Murgo's Wetners is going into the same tier. Uh, Murgo's Wetners, same situation, very easy. If you consider her to be a final boss, she is by far the easiest final boss in the entire series. It's just nothing to her. Uh, very slow, predictable attacks. Even that phase where she teleports around, you just kind of run around in a big circle and you avoid it. At the stage you're going to be when you fight Murgo, you really shouldn't be dying to her. German. German may be... German might be, I should say, the first controversial pick. Because I, I put German into the you'll probably die category. My honest opinion is that German is very difficult. Uh, he is fast, he has a lot of attacks, high HP, um, unpredictable. He has a lot of unpredictable attacks that are high damage and are likely to one-shot you or deal significant damage if you're not at full HP. He's not easy. I would say that you have to be very, very on point. Probably more than on point um, to fight German. He, again, is just his series of attacks. Quick, high range, large hitboxes. I can't remember a playthrough where I've ever had kind of an easy time with German. Next up, oh yeah, and if you see these cuts in the video, it's because I'm taking a drink. I'm going to be here for a while, so I know I'm in for the long run. Gotta keep the throat hydrated, you know? Moon Presence, you know where this is going. Moon Presence, you basically have to try to die to Moon Presence. Uh, the only reason to ever die to it is if you want to use the Burial Blade in New Game. 
uh, you can die to it and you pick it up and you can go to chalice dungeons and whatever. Otherwise, there is zero reason to die to the moon presence. Uh, who the fuck is this? Oh, this is Ludwig. <clears throat> Ludwig, I would say, goes into the needs concentration category. Ludwig is not an easy boss. Um, I'd say he's just shy of you'll probably die. Um, his first phase is definitely the harder one. There are not many bosses where phase one is the harder one, but I feel like he's a lot more unpredictable. That charge he does is fucking ridiculous with the hurt box. You need to be on point with uh, fighting Ludwig. He's not, he's not easy. Unlike the living failures, uh, living failures are going to be the not even paying attention category. Sure, yeah, they deal a lot of damage. They have a lot of HP, but very easy to dodge predictable attacks. By far the easiest bosses of the DLC. <clears throat> so yeah, there's not much to it. Just an easy boss. You just have to kind of hit them a long time until they go down. Even that meteor attack they do. I mean, ev at this point, everybody knows what the deal is because it only comes from one side. It's very, very predictable. Cleric Beast. Cleric Beast goes into the if you die uninstall category. The Cleric Beast is there to do one thing and that is to teach you the mechanics of Bloodborne. Teach you to be aggressive, teach you to constantly wail on your enemy. So really, outside of playthrough 1, you really shouldn't be dying to the Cleric Beast. Cleric Beast is mad, mad easy. Again, you just go in there, hit it a bunch and it'll go down quickly. Maria, on the other, other hand, does not go down quickly. Uh, again, this might be controversial, but I feel like Maria just very narrow, narrowly misses out on the you'll probably die category. I'd say that German is uh, way more unpredictable than Maria. Maria has that fire thing, you know, with the blood and then it lights up. But really, if you dodge to your left, it's almost always possible to be behind her. And then you really need to just learn how to dodge her big charge attacks. And you've basically like neutralized 80% of her toolkit. Maria is difficult. Don't get me wrong. I'm not downplaying it. She's very deadly. Lots of attacks. Unpredictable. She's parryable. But I would say that um, the blood and the fire are more of a gimmick. You just kind of have to learn to get around. Still, extremely, extremely difficult boss. So is the orphan. Orphan, 100% going into S tier. Orphan, I think, is one of the hardest bosses in the series. In fact, definitely he is the hardest boss of Bloodborne by a mile. He is incredibly dangerous. Extremely high attacks. Probably the most unpredictable boss ever in a Souls game. He just, he's crazy. That second phase is insane. There is no other way to say it. The second phase of Orphan of Cause is insane and half the time I feel like it's more down to RNG and luck that I beat it than actual skill because he just like steamrolls you and can kill you in one flurry of attack. So, I guess. So, Orphan... I'm a, I'm a bit mixed on Orphan. Sometimes I think he's a bullshit boss but by far the most difficult this is Lawrence the First Vicar, and Lawrence the First Vicar, I think, is going into A tier. A lot of people say that Lawrence is even harder than Orphan. I don't see that personally. I fought Lawrence a couple of times, definitely less than Orphan because he's optional, excuse me. Um, and he's extremely hard, again. But I never saw the kind of like people complain about the AoE, the lava, and all that. I never saw it as being that that dangerous. Don't get me wrong, he's very difficult and you need to be on point, but I don't know, he's hard, but definitely not S tier. Father Gascoigne, uh, not even paying attention category. Once you know how to, I mean, for phase one is very easy and phase two, you can just like, you can kill him before he even transforms. And that's the thing with the music box and Molotov cocktails, it's, the more difficult phase is entirely trivialized. The only reason he's not going here is because uh, the first phase packs a punch as well. And if you fight him properly, second phase can be a bit of a bitch. Bloodstarved Beast. Uh, I'm going to honestly put Bloodstarved Beast into Neat's Concentration. 
Well, no, actually, minimal effort. No, blood stab is minimal effort because there is only really one thing to pay attention to, and that is the poison. If you get poisoned on blood star beasts, you will probably die. Uh, the poison in Bloodborne is very quick. Um, he's still attacking you, so his attack is already de dealing damage. Plus, you have the poison ticking. So sometimes you're unlikely to be able to get an antidote off. But if you don't get poisoned by him, he is easy. He is easy. You just kind of have to. I mean, he can be both parried and he can be backstabbed. So there's that. But but still, still, you need to you need to pay attention. Vicar Amelia, uh, not even worth paying attention. Uh, Vicar Amelia, I thought used to be hard, but she has a weak side, and I think that's her. That's your right, where she can barely hit you. And she falls into the same category as Cleric Beast, of course a little bit harder, where you really just have to be constantly aggressive. And if you're constantly aggressive, she is going to go down quickly. Still some deadly attacks, but not much, honestly. Witches of Hemwick, you know where this is going. Oops, that's the wrong boss. That's it, Witches of Hemwick. You shouldn't really ever die to it. Once the gimmick is kind of found out it's just a matter of finding them and killing them you just run around this is actually this almost goes into the trash boss category but because it's an actual fight it is rescued uh but you shouldn't really ever be dying to witches shadows of yarnum mm, minimal effort minimal effort the snakes and the fact that there's three of them there's with gang bosses gang bosses are almost always going to be here because there's three of them, so they are likely to overwhelm you. Uh, that's the thing we found out on the last Bloodborne stream. I died quite a few times to them. Uh, just because of the fact that you have to keep track of three. Still, not much effort needed. Not a huge amount. Now we're getting into ROM. Rom is a difficult one because I almost want to put Rom into Trash Boss. I'm going to put Rom into Trash Boss. Rom is a Trash Boss. I mean, this is barely a fight. The only thing that's difficult about Rom is that he spawns, she spawns those bullshit ass spiders. They overwhelm you, they jump up, and that jumping dive bomb attack and the spiders in general deal an insane amount of damage insane otherwise rom itself is not that dangerous she has three attacks they're quite annoying but really the this is kind of like a gimmick gang fight and i hate rom i think rom is by far takes the cake for the worst boss in bloodborne by far the worst i i, I don't like this fight at all and i'm gonna be confident and i'm gonna put it into the trash boss the fact that it's not optional just makes it annoying and you know the tactic of using the blood pellets is probably the best thing to come out of it you can just kind of blaze through it quickly oh and by the way this doesn't have chalice dungeon bosses if this had chalice dungeon bosses first of all we'd be here until tomorrow and second of all i wouldn't know how to rate half of them uh martyr logarius goes into minimal effort he need you you need to pay attention with martyr especially second phase but if you know how to get rid of the sword, he that jump attack he does is probably the most difficult one to avoid. Jump attacks in general in Bloodborne are fairly difficult to avoid. Germans as well, it's kind of annoying. But yeah, you need to you need to pay attention with Martyr. Unlike with Dark Beast Parl, not even worth paying attention. Same as Cleric Beast and Vicar. You just go in, get under him, wail on him, and he is going to die very quickly, actually. Half the time I don't even bother to fight this boss. Um, it's, he's, he's not my favorite, honestly. Alright, moving into Demon Souls. I feel like Demon Souls is going to be fairly quick. There's not much to say about a lot of the Demon Souls bosses. You're definitely going to notice, I've kind of been thinking about this before starting recording. You'll definitely notice the power creep on bosses as the series went along. There's definitely some of that. Here's the deal, Old Monk, this is a PvP, or meant to be a PvP battle, the default NPC it summons is incredibly easy, and you shouldn't really ever die to it at the stage where you should be when you get to this boss, 
he is going into the D tier. Um, very, very easy boss. Exact same thing with Adjudicator. Same thing, Adjudicator only has the tongue attack, which is dangerous. Once you get down to its level, piss easy boss. One of the slowest bosses in the entire game. There's just nothing to it. You just hit the weak spot, he falls down, hit the bird, two, three rounds, and you should be out of there. Uh, it's not even, not even worth, like, almost not even worth classifying as a boss. That's how easy he is. Old Monk. Old Monk. Mm, not even worth paying attention. The only thing about Old Monk is that if he hits you, it's probably going to kill. It's probably going to kill. And with the Old Monk, uh, with some of these bosses, I am going to be factoring in the run back. If the boss has like an especially, especially difficult run back, it's going to contribute to the uh, overall scoring. If there was a shortcut straight to old... I mean, what did I say old monk? I meant old hero. Sorry, my bad. Old hero. This is old hero. Uh, if there was a shortcut to old hero, he would be here. But because there is not, you have to go through that extremely lengthy, annoying level, which is not really possible to run past. Uh, that's the only reason he is here. Otherwise, put on the Thieves Ring, which everybody gets, and there's not much he can do with you. Storm King, exact same thing. Storm King uh, is a gimmick cinematic boss fight cinematic. Uh, the only reason he is not here is he can kill you with his minions. Um, he does deal a lot of damage, so if he hits you, it's going to hurt. Not much to say about this one. Unlike the next two... Leechmonger and Dirty Colossus both go into the D. Uh, Leechmonger especially, easiest boss, I think, in the entire game. Uh, Dirty Colossus is not far behind. You just go in there, hit them. Very slow attacks, very predictable. I mean, Dirty Colossus has that fly mechanic, but you just touch the torch and, and that's it. He's, this, both of these bosses are incredibly weak to fire too. Which, considering how magic is in Demon Souls, you're gonna just like tear through them. Yeah, you shouldn't be really dying to either of them. Maiden Estrella and Garl Vinland go into this category just because Garl Vinland deals a shit ton of damage. Garl Vinland can easily one shot you, um, and they put him in that annoying, like, little closed gap where you can't really hit him properly. But other than that, it's just a PvP fight. It's just an NPC. False King Galant is the one of the few bosses in Demon Souls that would go into Neat's concentration. You need to be paying attention with um, King Galant. He the grab attack he does is very powerful. I mean, it drains a level. He has a very annoying run back if you don't bother killing Blue Dragon. Fast and aggressive, he has those blast waves he sends out, and he has a huge AoE. Other than that, he's not the most difficult, but you need to put your mind to uh, False King Galant when you fight him. Unlike King Galant, and I almost want to put King Galant to Trash Boss. I don't even know if it's possible to die to King Galant, but if you, if you die to it, uh, just delete your Demon Soul save. You don't deserve to see the ending, unless it was deliberate, a deliberate death. Vanguard, I'm assuming this means the tutorial Vanguard is going into B. Uh, if you want to beat him, you, you need to put your mind to it. Uh, just because some characters he one-shots, some characters he two-shots. You don't have a lot of healing, so you just need to kind of get your get on it and focus. Uh, Phalanx is going into D tier. I mean, with Phalanx, they pretty much give you the tools to beat him before her, I should say her. Before going in, they give you a ton of turpentine, they give you a ton of fire bombs, and those are the two tools you need to kill this boss. Uh, that's about it. You, once the minions are gone, there's literally nothing it can do against you. You, sh you shouldn't be dying to uh, it. I think Tower Knight just very, very barely gets into C tier. Um, you still don't need to pay attention, but he has a bit higher of a potential to kill you than Phalanx. He has an AoE, he has that Soul Arrow Blast, uh, and those are the two dangerous attacks. Otherwise, 
there's not much he can do. He goes down very quickly. Even if you go to straight to straight to one two after one one, not much to say about him. Penetrator. Uh, actually, I'd put penetrator right here. Same, not even worth paying attention. Penetrator is the only th only thing about penetrator is it's testing you if you've learned how to dodge. Which at the point where you fight penetrator, you really should know how to dodge. Uh, that's that's the main thing. Uh, you can dodge every single one of his attacks. There are no surprises, um, and that's it. That's it. Armored spider. Same thing. Armored spider. Uh, I say you shouldn't be really dying to armored spider. Uh, his attacks don't deal a lot of damage, uh, even if he hits you, I don't think he's ever been able to like r actually kill me. Um, he, he's very, very easy. And once you know the gimmick of having to run to the end of the corridor, once he charges, there's not much. Sure, he can slow you down. Well, I mean, the slow attack and the fire... Very, very narrowly. I think just because I, I remember that he can like slow you and then blast you with the fire, which is fairly annoying. That's the only thing I think that can kill you. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put Armored Spider into, into C. Just very narrowly. Flame Lurker needs concentration. Mm, well, actually, no. Minimal effort. Flame Lurker is minimal effort because there are some very clear and easy exploits with fire protection rings. Uh, Water Whale almost trivializes this boss. You still need to put your mind to it, but if you know these exploits, you can get him very easily. This is the Dragon God. You know where this is going. Whoops. Dragon God is a trash boss. Stealth fight. Again, if I was ranking them based on potential to kill you, he'd be S tier because one hit and you're dead. But obviously this is a stupid gimmick fight, stealth, stealth, so he, he doesn't count, that's a trash boss. Fool's Idol, uh, just barely into not even paying attention, again, the traps, the traps are annoying and if you get stuck out in the open and you get blasted by all of them, you can get killed. Uh, because the tra traps are invisible, uh, that's the only thing that kind of makes this boss slightly above D tier. Man eaters, man eaters for sure goes into A A tier. I'd say man eaters and Kingalant are the two hardest bosses of Demon Souls. I kind of hesitate sometimes which one is more difficult. Narrow ledge with man eaters, they deal a lot of damage, very aggressive, and they're also so sometimes kind of buggy with their attacks and sometimes it's just like you know if you buff yourself and you get in there and they just decide to fly off it can get so fucking annoying um plus the run back is not it's short but there are some very annoying enemies in the way uh, man eaters are not easy i mean they knock you down they can kill you so you have to you have to be concentrating with man eaters always okay i think we're getting into dark souls one here Dark Souls 1 territory, starting with Dark Sun Gwendolyn. Very narrowly goes into C. I mean, the only thing is that he can kill you quickly. But those magic attacks, the big blasts are the dangerous ones. And the, the arrows, I'd say, that's the dangerous part. Otherwise, he needs only a few attacks uh, to get killed. This is Crossbreed Priscilla. Yeah, it is. Crossbreed Priscilla goes into B. Uh, the invisible part is the thing where you need to put in some minimal effort. She has very easy to dodge attacks, but when she goes invisible, you need to like pay attention to the footprints or hit her with a throwing knife. And then she goes down. She's easy. Stray demon. Stray demon not even paying attention. Most of the demons are going to be in these two tiers. Uh, they all play the same. Stray Demon has the blasts. Uh, there's not much, honestly, not much <laughs> to say about Stray Demon. Ceaseless Discharge. Mm -hmm. well, if you fight him properly, even then, even if you fight Ceaseless properly, you shouldn't really be dying to it. And why would you fight Ceaseless properly? It takes like ages to kill him when there's an intended, very clear 
uh, workaround to get him to jump and knock him off. Which used, people used to think was a glitch, but it's intentional. You can kill him in like two minutes, so you shouldn't be really dying to him. Like, why would you ever fight him properly? There's zero reason. Demon Fire Sage, exact same thing as Stray Demon. No, absolutely nothing to say about this boss. He plays exactly the same as Stray Demon. Both of them are easy. You can just switch your mind off and hit him, hit him. But pay attention to the a AoE, that's it. Centipede Demon. <laughs> Dark Souls has a lot of shitty bosses. Centipede Demon needs minimal effort because there's the lava. And aside from the lava, he can get into this like really annoying attack pattern where he just keeps spamming that long range uh, centipede attack. And that can get so fucking annoying if he just stands at a distance uh, and you have to lure him to that part where there is no lava. Otherwise, when you do that, when you get through this minor annoying phase, he goes down very quickly. Bed of Chaos. There's only one way to put Bed of Chaos or one tier, and that is trash. Like, you're 99% likely to die to Bed of Chaos at least once. Uh, and if, again, if I was ranking it based on that, it would be S tier, but... Obviously, this is the trashest of trash bosses. There's no better example of a trash boss. So he's or she is getting banished into the trash boss tier. You know where this is going. You sh if you if you die to pinwheel, um, don't call me. Uh, don't at me. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Yeah, pinwheel. Is, what is there to say about this boss? He's not even difficult if you fight him early. And that's that's all I can say. Gravelord Nito, just because of the skeletons, if you don't have a holy weapon, he goes into not even paying attention. He has one attack that's annoying, that uh, ground slam that you know comes out from under you, that Gravelord sword. Otherwise, if you take care of the skeletons with a holy weapon, he's just like guaranteed to die. Seath the Scaleless, uh, also not even paying attention. This this is one of my least favorite bosses. I, I really hate Seath. He's huge. He's, he moves around like a fucking forklift. Um, very easy and uh, attacks, but at the same time kind of annoying. The only part I would... Listen, the thing is, if you want to get the sword, the Moonlight Greatsword, this boss jumps up to A. But because I don't get the moonlight on like 90% of my playthroughs, I'd put him into C. Very easy boss. Asylum. He's below the these tiers. I mean, if you die to Asylum after your first or second playthrough, uh, it's not a good look. It's not a good look because he is nothing. He is nothing. Great Wolf Stiff. C switch your mind off. This is a cinematic story fight, more like mm, easy, easy attacks. You just get under it and you wail on it. And she, I think it's a she, she goes down very quickly. Four Kings. I'd put Four Kings into minimal effort um, just because of the fucking arena. If you fought Four Kings in a normal arena, they'd be easy, they'd be C. But with, with, with this arena, it's very difficult to tell distance, especially with their magic attacks. You likely are going to be hit. I mean, just put on your armor and tank them. That's been the method to kill them ever since day one. Um, but you need, you need some effort. You need to f kill them fairly quickly as well. Sanctuary Guardian is going into B tier as well. He's very aggressive. Uh, especially with melee. He flies around all over the place. It's difficult to pin him down. But to the contrary, he has very low HP. So if you get in on him, couple of hits and it's going to be dead. <clears throat> Knight Artorias also goes into minimal effort. Knight Artorias, I would say, is like a more difficult penetrator. More HP, very, very resistant to any non-physical damage types. But the at the end of the day, Knight Artorius is still about knowing when to dodge, be sticking close to him, and just attacking. He doesn't really have any outstanding big gimmicks. Calamite, 
Calamide is going into A category just because of the damage it deals. If you're not paying attention um, and not concentrating, he's going to blast you and that blast is 90% going to leave you dead. Same thing with Manus. Uh, Manus, I'd say, goes into the Nice concentration category, especially once he starts using his spells. When you when you see the second phase, him going into spell mode, you really need to like have your timing ready to use Silver Pendant, especially that frontal like shotgun like spell that has caught me off so many times. And even when you're concentrating, sometimes it's difficult to tell what the hell he's gonna do. So definitely needs concentration. But I don't think he's hard enough to go into S tier. And finally we have, well not finally, we have a couple of more. Uh, we have Gwen Lord of Cinder, who I'd say is also going into A category. He's a parrying boss. You always have to be on point with parrying. You need to concentrate to be able to parry him. Uh, and he does a lot of damage, and he does a lot of damage. Of course, the only one of the ways to trivialize him is to summon Solaire, then he drops down to like here, but still very aggressive. If you fight him without parrying, he is um, even more difficult. He's actually quite a challenge then, but yeah, you just need to put your mind to it and parry him. Taurus Demon, you know where this is going. Extremely easy, it's still a tutorial boss, I would put it. Um, Slow attacks, telegraphed, that's about it. The only danger is if you get, by by some like unlucky circumstance, you get knocked off, but you shouldn't really ever go where the gap is um, with Taurus Demon. Gargoyles, just barely edging into not even paying attention. Um, I can tune out in Gargoyles 90% of the times, but considering the potential to kill compared to the previous two bosses, it's much higher. Uh, they can still kill you at the stage you would be with the game, so just barely in to see. Moonlight Butterfly, here I'm going to roast myself because uh, Moonlight Butterfly is an easy, easy D tier. Uh, if you die, uninstall, which technically means that I should go and uninstall Dark Souls because I died to Moonlight Butterfly not too long ago. Um, and it was mad embarrassing. So yeah, I'm roasting myself a bit here. Uh, Moonlight Butterfly you shouldn't ever be dying to. Capra, just because of the dogs, goes into C tier. Once you once you get through that initial hurdle, which pretty much can be done with a 100% block shield, Capra is, is nothing. It's, it's a nothing boss. Gaping Dragon, I'd say, is D. Uh, you shouldn't really ever be dying to Gaping Dragon. He's way easier than Capra Demon. Just has more health. Um, very, very slow attacks. Very telegraphed. He has no big gimmick. That Acid Puddle, you just need to know when it's coming and run away. And incredibly easy. Quelag. Quelag is C. Dodge Boss, you just know and have to know when to dodge. Kind of like Penetrator. If you get unlucky with the Lava, you might die, but... Yeah, not much, not much to Quelag here. Same thing with Iron Golem. The biggest danger is him throwing you off. Um, if you position him well, and if you summon Tarkus, I mean, the, the fight is 100% trivialized by Tarkus. But if you fight him, you know, he, he is fairly resistant to damage. But And there's a danger of him knocking you or throwing you off, but very telegraphed attacks once again. Kind of a theme with these, these boss categories. Ornstein and Smo are going into A tier. What the hell? Did I grab Moon Presence by accident? What the hell was that? Moon Presence, you were in trash tier. Yeah. Uh, probably because the battery in my mouse is dying. Whatever. Ornstein and Smo A. You you can never really fully relax with Ornstein and Smo. No matter no matter how many times you fought them, what build you're rocking, you're gonna need to put your mind into fighting Ornstein and Smo just because of all the possibilities that could happen. Um, and if you go for Super Onstein, he is going to be more challenging, obviously. But you, you just need to concentrate, especially on phase one. There is no other way around it. All right, we are 40 minutes in and we are only getting to the big guns right now. Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls 2 has the most bosses in the series. 
a lot of shitty bosses, so I'm going to be going through some of these fairly quickly, just because there are so goddamn many of them, and a lot of them are gonna be here, just to spoil it. Skeleton Lords, neutered bone wheels, shitty boss, um, don't die to Skeleton Lords. There's three of them, probably one of the few... Only Dark Souls 2 is gonna have gang bosses in these tiers, because just there is like an overwhelming amount of bosses, and a lot of them are ganks, but Skeleton Lord is so easy, so, so easy. Covetous Demon, you know where this is going. Job at a Hut, there's nothing to him, there's absolutely nothing to him. Uh, I mean, if you deleted him from the game, I wouldn't mind. Um, just go in and hit him. He has telegraphed attacks, uh, and that's about it. I don't even know why they have that mechanic where you can shoot down corpses for him to get distracted. Mitha, very, very slightly going into C. With Jester Thomas, this, but uh, if you fight her normally, she can get knocked into the puddle. She has some magic attacks, but eh, not much to Mitha here. Smelter Demon, uh, I assume there's going to be two of these. There, there's the second one. I think this one is the standard one. Uh, the standard smelter is going to go into the... Actually, both of them will be going into... Let me grab the other one as well. Into the needs concentration category. For the simple reason that, aside from them having some annoying attacks, especially blue, having slightly different timings, both of these bosses have insanely annoying runbacks. Insanely annoying. Uh, Alon Knights, just the way that whole runback is set up, and the second, the optional area is horrible, horrible. So just because of the trash runbacks, you need to put your mind to these bosses because you'll be thinking, you'll be concentrating and thinking, fuck, I don't want to do this run again. I don't want to do it. That's the main thing that will be driving you. Old Iron King, you know where this is going. What even is this boss? I mean, is a demon of corn or something. Uh, slow, slow, slow attacks. Slight chance to knock you into the lava, but it almost never happens. Nashka, uh, shittier version of Quelag, not even worth paying attention. Um, if you're speed running, she is difficult. She's one of the big hurdles, but we're not. We're not speed running. We're just playing the game normally. Royal Rat Authority. This is the big one, right? Yeah, the other one is the Vanguard. Authority goes into minimal effort. More. Di this is a more difficult Capra Demon at the start. You have those Poison Rats. If those Poison Rats get to you, you're going to have a bad time. They're going to inflict Toxin and... That's going to be your end. Uh, there's, very, there's very few chances of surviving that if you get Toxic on you. However, this boss is optional. I don't fight this boss ever, and there's a good reason, because he is shitty. Prowling Magus and Congregation. Why is this even a boss? Th this is a normal enemy. This, this shouldn't be a boss. Um, doesn't even give you a boss soul. That's how trashy. He knows he, sh he shouldn't be a boss. He knows. You almost deserve to go in here. Duke. Duke's dear Freya. Um, not even worth paying attention. There's some initial like ganking with the skeletons, but well, not skeletons, the spiders. But you can just go around, you kill the spiders, and then you just wail on the heads. There's nothing to this boss, absolutely nothing. The other rat, the other rat, gank, gank fight, but the thing is, the rat has so little HP, because once you find him and wail on him, he'll die in like a couple of hits. Nothing to this boss. Just because of it's a gank and you can get uh, petrified and poisoned, it goes into C. Last giant, you know where this is going very telegraphed attacks. Um, only reason why he might be dangerous is if you have low adaptability, because you know how dodging is in Dark Souls 2, and he has some fucked up hitboxes, but that's about it. 
the rotten just barely into not even paying attention he deals damage but i don't know the dark souls 2 is the weirdest because again this game is overloaded with bosses and i love the game to death but there's not much you can say a lot of these bosses do the same thing like some slow swings big monster slow swings bigger swings aoe that's it so it's kind of difficult to say a lot about these bosses dragon riders this is the dual dragon rider d don't ever die to this boss at the stage where you are when you fight them uh you're going to be like the the bow and arrow one you can kill in like three hits again this can almost go into the why is this even a boss category which there should be a separate one for dark souls 2 why is this even a boss um they didn't know that they can make mini bosses with dark souls 2 they forgot looking glass knight uh, very very minimal effort needed just to avoid hitting in the mirror constantly some weapons just do badly against this boss if you're a spellcaster you're gonna have a slightly bad time yeah. and he can summon a gank but now that there are no players and even when there were it was almost impossible to get summoned uh, there's not much to it Demon of Song, I'm going to be slightly roasting myself again because I think this is a D-tier boss, but I died to it not long ago. Uh, I guess there's different levels of not paying attention. I guess now I have to uninstall two Souls games. So, sorry Dark Souls 2 and 1, you're not going to be ever played again. <laughs> I'm only kidding, of course. Velstat nothing Valstat is you just dodge him he has nothing dangerous going on slow attacks predictable i guess he's he's supposed to be like the ornstein and smo of dark souls 2 like this big lead up to him but he ends up being an extremely underwhelming boss uh, i've never ever found him hard that's the thing uh this is the guardian dragon the guardian dragon absolutely you shouldn't be dying to uh, this this can almost all be a why is this even a boss tier when you go up and you fight the same enemies or the same boss as normal enemies and he he does nothing uh, ancient dragon ancient dragon is going into trash boss ancient dragon and I'll always hold on to this is a bullshit ass fight the only reason he kills you is because he has insane hurt boxes truly insane otherwise he has like three moves uh, he's one of the most boring bosses and it's not even worth fighting him he would be s tier because if you fight him it takes ages he's very difficult to kill but i'm gonna say it ancient dragon is a trash boss and not meant to be fought by any normal human giant lord uh giant lord is going to be minimal effort only reason is that he is his sword attack well no no it's c he, i have to put him into c have we even put any uh, dark souls 2 bosses oh yeah the smelters yeah yeah and giant lord shitty uh, not even worth it king vendrick is an interesting one because he could almost go into trash boss, but no, I'd put King Vendrick into minimal effort. Uh, you just, he's another one of these uh, very slow attacks, very predictable, but if he hits you, you're most likely gonna die. Slightly more difficult than old hero because you can't exploit him with a ring. Uh, so that's about it. But again, you just kind of circle him and there is not much he can do. He has some weird, extremely rare attacks that can catch you off guard. That's about it. Uh, throne guardians throne guardians are minimal effort uh, you need to have some on point dodging these are also kind of an orstein and small replacement but otherwise the thing is like once they put away their web their shields to buff they become infinitely easier which i think should be the other way around but whatever they, they also take mad damage it's just you have to kind of time it you have to know the gimmick as well but easy easy Pursuer, uh, not even worth paying attention. No, I don't pay attention ever when I'm fighting Pursuer. 
there's like a million of them too in the game as many bosses so every single person who plays dark souls 2 are gonna be like this when fighting the pursuer because you know their movesets so well Nashandra, uh now that they've added the hollow skin Nashandra goes down to c before she used to be i'd say b uh you needed to kind of take care of the things and she the fact that she constantly hollowed you was annoying but with the hollow skin which trivializes her main mechanic you can't you don't even need to pay attention final bosses are never the strong suit of any souls game okay i have zero clue what the hell this is oh it's aldia 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 minimal effort i'd say mm, is it though no I don't think I've ever died to Aldia, or very rarely. Yeah, yeah, you need to put in some effort. You need to put in some effort. He has a lot of HP, and the only reason he's difficult would be if you fought Guardian, Nashandra, and then him in one succession, because you're going to have, like, no healing items, but very, very easy attacks once again. Dark Lurker is actually our first A. This is a difficult boss. This is a difficult boss. Uh, very annoying to unlock and it can split into two and become a gank or it does split into two to become a gank and he has a lot of damage he has a lot of damage and again it's a gank fight but but cool the thing that prevents him from going any higher is just how he is he's not he doesn't have that many tricks up his sleeve but also you're going to be probably playing a hexer if you fight this boss which is probably the most overpowered build in the entirety of dark souls 2 i have no idea who the hell this is oh i know what this is the trash gang squad gang squad would go into almost here i mean they can kill you but no because there is actually some fighting uh not paying much minimal effort yeah they some of these are difficult to place minimal effort needed for gang squad because it's a gang squad there's three of them elana squalid queen is going into a elana is difficult you know why because she summons velstat and then you it's a gang fight and she has some annoying like she can spawn fireballs behind you and teleport behind you and with Valstad being unpredictable as he is uh, in this context, yeah, you need to you need to put your mind to Elana. Same thing with Sin, the slumbering dragon. Exact same situation. He's a, she's a dragon boss, flies around a bunch. Um, kind of on the wait. Did I put these into? Yeah, I put him in the wrong one. Oops, my bad. Basically. Calamit level of difficulty, I'd say, but just plays differently. Just plays differently. Um, the toxin is annoying, and the fact that half the time she's not even on the ground uh, are the two things that make this a little bit more challenging. Fume Knight. Fume Knight. Whoops. Did I drop him? Yep. Fume Knight. Very, very, very narrowly misses out on You'll Probably Die. No, no, you know what? I'll put Fume Knight here because um, most of the times I'm on point when I'm play playing Fume Knight, but if I'm not, I'll be dying to him a lot. You know why. Unpredictable, shit ton of damage. If you have, if you screwed up your adaptability and it's low, you are going to not enjoy fighting this boss because he, his gigantic sword makes him difficult to avoid. Lon. Alon is slightly easier because of the run back you need to you need to concentrate because he is difficult by his own and you don't want to do that run back this is one of the trashest run backs uh on the same level as smelter demons it's not fun he's cool though i i really like this boss boss both in design and in theme like everything then we have, for some reason, Nadalia Bride of Ash. Does this even count as a boss? I mean, she doesn't have a... She doesn't have an HP bar, right? This is a trash boss. Like, Nadalia is not, not even... 
I mean, it's just the statues. There's nothing to this one. Dragon Rider, you know where this is going. He is the same as the twin ones. Don't die to Dragon Rider. You can cause him to fall off. And that's it. Ava. Ava needs... No, with Ava, it's minimal of effort. Um... Mm. Now, now it's minimal effort. There's you don't need to pay attention. Here we go with Lod and Zalen. Needs concentration. I mean, in my heart, I want to put them into trash boss. That's what I really, really want to do. But I'm not going to do that because there is an actual fight. But the run back, the arena leading up to these two. Is horrible easily the worst run back and the worst area in the entire series and because of that you're going to be concentrating fighting these two because you don't want to have to go through what you just went through to get to these two bosses uh, I don't know why this is counting Alsana as well she doesn't count she doesn't count burnt ivory king though definitely goes into a tier He's a massive gank, or like not not even a gank. There is a very annoying uh, kind of wave mob fight before, uh, and those enemies are incredibly annoying. They have very high poise, almost impossible to stagger. They kind of gank you. They are programmed to fight you primarily or kind of aggro on you, and your allies are, are kind of trash. Uh, they don't do a good job sometimes of distracting these. Uh, so that means when you get to Burnt Ivory, you're already going to be drained of resources. Uh, and even though he's like only a mid-difficulty fight, combined with how much shit you need to go through before the fight, makes him an A-category boss. So yeah, Alsana doesn't count. Old Dragon Slayer, you know where this is going. Just solo Ornstein, <coughs> excuse me, and not even the big version. Uh, this is a small version of... Or on Steam, like <laughs> shit, shitty. Same thing with Flex Cell Sentry. This is nothing to this boss. Um, you can do this with your eyes closed. Uh, very telegraphed, easy attacks. Ruin Sentinels, just slightly above. Um, you have to kind of exploit the fact that they jump up. Uh, that's how you deal damage to them, because otherwise. It's a three gank boss, which is annoying. Th that way they're difficult, but if you take them out one by one or isolate them as much as possible, it's not, it's not. And finally, the last one, I had to kind of think about who the fuck this is, because I forgot this boss even. Oh no, we have a couple more. Chariot. I mean, I mean, Belfry Gargoyle. I saw Chariot. Belfry Gargoyle is um uh, see put in a bit of kind of effort or i mean you don't even need to uh just the gargoyles but more of them <sighs> nobody fights this boss uh ever I, I i don't tend to at least especially now that you this this is how you used to get the key to lost sinner but that's not a mechanic anymore in scholar lost sinner same category same tier now that you can light the torch very easily, you just kind of dodge. Predictable attacks, slow attacks, so you just need to have your adaptability up at this stage. Chariot, 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 same thing. This is a gimmick boss fight, but just barely saved from trash boss category because of the horse, but the, you're never gonna actually... See, the thing is, the horse itself would be D. But combine that with the whole mechanic, it's just going into the not even paying attention part. Um, he crushes his minions most of the time. You take out the, what's it called, the casters and you just close the door. And then the horse is easy, easy, easy. Okay, and finally we have come to Dark Souls 3. I'm over an hour in and I'm out of water so I need to finish up quickly. That probably sounded horrible on the mic. Anyways, Dark Souls 3. We have Aldrich, 
I'm going to put, this is not a trash boss because this is not even a boss, but I'm going to put her here just to get her out of the way. We have Aldrich. Aldrich, Aldrich, Aldrich is going into minimal effort. You need to pay attention to the arrows, the big blast. He's like a more difficult Gwendolyn. Um, and that's really kind of the best way to describe him. The arrows are mad annoying. There is no way around it. Uh, but And the fact that his melee attacks can just like randomly, unpredictably hit you. But other than that, if you can dodge well, you put in a bit of effort, he'll go down. Next up, Dancer of the Boreal Valley goes into Neat's Concentration. Dancer definitely does. A uh, lot of attacks. Unpredictable, high damage. She is cool. I, I really enjoyed this boss fight. And, you know, of course, this game, I mean, this list doesn't reflect what I think of these bosses personally. It's just difficulty. Uh, but Dancer is, is, is a boss that I really like and a well designed one. Just has a lot of good mechanics. And you need to be on point when fighting her, otherwise, you're going to get killed very quickly. Yorm, easy, easy D tier. I mean, you shouldn't ever really be dying to Yorm, even if you solo him. And he even has some attacks which don't even deal damage. He has like some this fire slam which just knocks you back. Why? Why? He's so cool. He looks so cool and he is a trash boss fight, like a shittier version of the Storm Kings. Cause I don't know. It's just weird. Like why is a giant weak to wind blasts, whatever. I don't know. He looks so cool, but he's so disappointing. I know because I fought him not too recently. I mean, not too long ago. Uh, this is Osiris, the consumed king, is going into minimal effort. He has that charge, that phase where he goes crazy is annoying. Kind of like Ludwig, you know, but he is overall easier where that charge has like a ridiculous hitbox on it. Even like most of his hitboxes are kind of ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, if you get past those, you dodge that a couple of times successfully, he'll, he'll go down. All right, we have, who the fuck is this? Oh, this champion Gandir. Cool, that's champion Gandir. Uh, champion Gandir is, um, needs concentration. This is also a cool boss. Um, he hits hard. He has a wide variety of attacks, but everything is dodgeable. Everything is dodgeable. And that makes it kind of the fight fun. He's kind of like Artorias, only more difficult because of Dark Souls 3 being naturally more difficult. Well, you need to be on point when fighting champion because he's going to take you the fuck out if you're not careful. Okay, next up we have Dragon Slayer armor. Very, very minimal effort needed. Uh, he hits hard. That's his main gimmick, that he hits very hard. Otherwise, slow attacks and predictable. And there is that phase where he calls in like blasts from the butterflies. It can get very unpredictable there. That little section there is your highest chance of dying, but... If you get through that little section, otherwise he is going to be easy to dodge. All right, next up we have this Lothric line. Yeah, Lothric and Lorien. Lothric and Lorien go into needs concentration. Just because of how they work, um, depending on how much damage you do, it can be a long time to kill them. And that just makes it more difficult. I mean, Lorien, yeah, Lorien, he's fast. He can teleport all over the place. Lothric ma Lothric's magic is annoying combined with the teleportation and the attacks. So you, you need to put your mind into uh, how you're handling this boss. Still a cool one. I, I like this boss quite a bit. We have, this is the ancient Vyvern immediately trash. This is not even a fight. You just drop attack it and it dies. Get the fuck out of here, Ancient Wyvern. Uh, Nameless King is going into A category. Two-phase boss. Two-phase bosses are always more difficult. And phase one is okay with this guy. Uh, if you attack the neck of the dragon, 
but phase two he gets difficult and it also kind of does that thing that uh four kings does where the arena makes it kind of difficult sometimes to tell what he's gonna do or the range of his attacks phase two is fairly powerful uh you you need to be on point with your dodging with your defense and really again because it's two phase this when you die it's gonna be a long way back Soul of Cinder. Soul of Cinder, I think, is probably the most difficult of the final bosses. No, Gwyn. I th I don't want to say Gwyn is... Well, no, what am I... What the fuck am I saying with German in S tier? I'm stupid. Soul of Cinder kind of falls somewhere between. You need to be on point with your dodging. Um, the different phases are cool but he really follows a set pattern on what he's going to be switching to so you'll always know what's going to be happening and none of the attacks are incredibly difficult if you put some effort into what you are doing and the second phase where he transforms into Gwyn is almost easier um he only has like a couple of attacks so there's not much he can do in that phase if you <coughs> okay try not to die here in the last stretch if you get to the last phase, you're almost guaranteed a victory. You are almost guaranteed a victory. Okay, Udex Gandir, um, another roast, because I've died to Udex Gandir on my previous playthrough. I guess I have to uninstall all the Souls games, except Bloodborne. Bloodborne is the one where I haven't like really died to some trash ass easy boss. Very easy. Just take fire bombs, throw throw it throw it at him, and he's going to be very very dead. Who the hell is that? Oh, I for I forgot this was even a boss. The champion and the grave tender, or the wolf, the big wolf. It's just a guy. It's just a guy, but when the wolf shows up, it's another gank, and it's difficult. The wolf has some insane attacks where he just kind of like charges at you and the hurt box is ridiculous. The guy itself, he can block most of your attacks, but it's, it's just a PvP fight. The combination of the wolf is what makes it difficult. Even when the guy is dead, the wolf doesn't go down easily, believe me. Uh, we have here Sister Free, you know where this is going. This is the easiest S tier ever. It's a toss-up. There's three very difficult bosses um, in Dark Souls 3. Four, actually. Four. Sister Freed, incredibly hard. I mean, three phases. And one of the few three-phase bosses. And the only one where phase three is... Well, none of the phases let up. Fast, unpredictable. I mean, phase three is absolutely insane. She's like the orphan of cause. She... Do, like really exemplifies this like putting Bloodborne bosses into Dark Souls type mentality that Dark Souls 3 seem to have uh, and I'm not entirely sure I like it I still haven't after all these years managed to make up my mind whether I like Freed or not because of that third phase mm, I don't know sometimes she feels like she's bullshit um, well whatever Demon Prince also S tier. Demon Prince, I mean, I think they have, outside of Midir, the most HP out of any boss. Uh, also three phases, and also the situation where the third phase doesn't line up. I mean, if you, pay, if you play any type of pyro build or fire build, you're going to be fucked because they take almost no damage. So it's just going to prolong the fight. And even with good damage, full Estus, full healing, it is almost impossible not to run out of healing by the time you reach phase 3. Um, the only thing that makes them slightly easier than a Freed, for example, or an Orphan, is that you can control how difficult the last phase is going to be, even though it's always going to be difficult, because you kill two high HP bosses and then you get a third one with even more HP on top, so I don't know. Design-wise, kind of cool, but uh, very difficult. This is the um, the PvP fight. 
Um, even if you get the guy only, the NPC, you really shouldn't be dying to this one. Um, and that, there's not much to say about him. He can be staggered, he can be parried. Does have some add-ons like Pain and Guardians he summons, but those can be taken out very quickly. Uh, so don't really die to this guy. I think he's the first Dark Souls 3 boss that goes in here. Mr... what's his name? I really just forgot his name. Gale. Gale. Yeah, yeah. Slave Knight Gale. You know where this is going. I'd say slightly more fair than Sister Freed. Uh, but still an extremely challenging boss. Same situation, very high HP pool, three phases. So you are going to be um, struggling for resources all the time by the time you get to the end. Plus he does that big like kind of AOE, the same as Lothric, which kind of like, you know, homes in on you. <clears throat> big damage, big attacks, unpredictable, um, difficult to dodge. It's kind of chaotic, this fight. It's kind of chaotic. A fitting end to technically the end to Dark Souls, but you're not going to be ever letting up when fighting Slave Knight Gale. And of course, Dark Eater Midir joins the S tiers. Um, I don't think I need to say much about this boss. Um, I've going to be honest with you here. I've only killed him once. I've only killed him once. Um, he, the, like, there's no really better example of what I dislike about Dark Souls 3 boss design than Medir. He looks cool and everything, but this just like give everything a shit ton of HP and attacks that almost always one or two shot. And then here you go. To me, it doesn't really exemplify what the series should be about. But that's your personal opinion. There is an exploit that makes it easy to kill him with Toxic Mist. But if you fight him normally, you are going to be having a bad time because just for the sheer amount of damage, the damage to HP ratio is too high on this boss. And no matter what build you're rocking, you're gonna be you're gonna be struggling to ha to get consistent damage. All right, we're nearing the end here, almost there. Vort, Vort, you shouldn't really die to, but he, as far as first bosses goes, he is the most difficult one in the series. I'd put him into not even paying attention. Um, he's a little bit over that, but the Great Wood is a don't die to boss. The Curse Routed Great Wood gimmick fight and not a good one uh, but he has almost no fast attacks if you stay away from the hand the grabby hand in the second phase there's not much he can do because every single one of his attacks is slow and even the slow ones are unlikely to kill you crystal sage just a tiny bit more difficult because of the ganking nature of it and if you get like a bad setup, you are, you're going to get like spanned with soul spears and it's not going to be fun for you. It's not going to be fun, but you all you need to do is reach the main one and hit him a couple of times and then he's going to respawn. More of an annoying fight than a very difficult one. Deacons of the Deep, please don't die to Deacons of the Deep. Uh, the only uh, time I've consistently died to Deacons is when I was doing that stupid crossbow challenge which is almost impossible on this game, but that's besides the point. In a normal playthrough, you're unlikely to have trouble with Deacons. You just kind of have to get in there. If you have a heavy weapon, forget about it. They go down too easily. Uh, but you, you just need to hit the right one. They can get unpredictable and they can get ganky if they surround you, but each individual Deacon deals such low damage that most of the times it's not a problem. Cool, we have Pharaoh's Undead Legion, i.e. the Abyss Watchers. Minimal effort. Um, 
almost Bloodborne-ish, kind of like an easier version of Maria. Same deal, gank. I'm just thinking how many of the fights in Dark Souls 3 are ganks, a lot of them. But you do have a little helper by default, so... Low HP on phase 1, kind of like a weaker version of Maria on phase 2. They have a couple of unpredictable attacks, but uh, most of the time you can almost even get sloppy with your dodging. The only thing you need to be careful of is uh, to have enough heals to last you for phase 2, because phase 2 does a lot more damage. High Lord Volnir, you know where he's going. Um, very easy, don't die to High Lord Volnir. Hit the chains a couple of times. If you're using a fast weapon, it's even better because it goes off a number of hits instead of flat damage. So you can get through this very quickly. And we have the final two bosses. Um, Old Demon King is um, minimal effort just because he has some bullshit hurt boxes when you're close to him, which are more difficult to dodge than I'd care to admit. Um, for me at least, for me at least. He has a big hurt box with that big like bonk stick. So that's the thing. But his magic attacks themselves, aside from that ring of fire, are not that dangerous. Can be annoying to avoid, but not that dangerous. And the big meteor he calls down is kind of the same as living failures, that it always comes from the same direction. An okay boss. No better example of a middle of the road boss than this guy. And finally, Pontiff Sullivan. Pontiff Sullivan is going to actually go into Neat's concentration. Just because of the unpredictable nature of him, he also feels like a Bloodborne boss, like Bloodborne speed. Of course, he can be almost completely trivialized with a shield, but even if you use the shield, the fire resistance shield, you still need to pay attention because he is not easy to hit. And um, if you drop your concentration, you drop your guard, he's going to annihilate you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, outside of the Sekiro bosses, which, is that all the Sekiro bosses? Really? Seriously, that's it? The boss ranking for, here is the boss ranking for the Soulsborne series. Holy shit, how long did that take? Like an hour, over an hour. I think this is a good list. I think I'm happy with this one. Uh, I wouldn't really change anything just going off the top of my head. Maybe later on if I look into it I'll be like fuck why did I put this boss here or that boss there. The power creep that I mentioned at the very beginning. There is a very definite increase in boss difficulty as the series went along. Naturally because the series got more popular and more people played people kind of got accustomed to souls, so they needed to kind of ramp up the difficulty. Otherwise, um, you know, it would have been all too easy. But still, it's a little bit telling that uh, out of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bosses, uh, four of them are from Dark Souls 3. One Dark Souls 2 and two from Bloodborne. I don't think there are any Dark Souls 1 or Demon Souls bosses that reach this tier. Like this tier here is the cream of the crop. Always challenging, always likely to cause one or two deaths. There's no way around it. Again, I don't think I could put any Dark Souls 1 boss on the same level as Orphan, of course. And Demon Souls, forget about it. I mean, if you look down in this list as well, you can see that there is a lot of Demon Souls entries, a lot of them. Which is natural, that's just how the series is. Uh, still, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to wrap it up here because my throat is shot, kind of. Hope you guys enjoyed this little video. If you did make it all the way to the end here, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Uh, as always, these are my opinions. Let me know if you disagree with anything. Also, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed again this video. This was kind of a little bit something a little bit different. Who knows what else I'm going to be doing. Maybe one day we'll get to a Sekiro ranking. Until then, make sure to like, comment and subscribe as always. Turn on post notifications to always stay up to date on the content and also my streams. Take care everyone. Peace out and goodbye.